Hey guys, this is Terry with Warshlog. Today I want to show you how we instruct our customers to install camber plates and the most crucial item of all to keep them from making noise is getting the top nut tight. Warshlog camber plates are made to go on top of a McPherson strut, inverted or non-inverted. This is an inverted bill stein. The strut stem is somewhat unique, but it's one we work with all the time. What's unique about our camber plates is we always include an upper spring perch with an integral radial bearing and we have different bushings that we press into these so that they fit the stem profile perfectly. There's no rattling, it's nice and snug. There's an upper bushing that we press into the bearing of the spring perch we include that's made to fit inside of our 3 quarter inch ID or 19 millimeter spherical bearing. And you'll notice that once I install that, it fits tight. We also have an upper bushing we call the upper spool that fills in the gap between the spherical bearing and the upper stem. That goes on, everything's nice and tight. To keep it from moving up and down, we have to install a top nut. Most of the time, we'll use the top nut that comes with the struts. That's usually a nylock, nylon retaining ring, a nylock nut. And that is a locking mechanism that will, see I can't even turn it by hand anymore. Once you install this correctly, it won't back off. We also have what we call a long reach nut, and sometimes it'll be a double nut. Whatever type of nut it is, it must be installed tight to the upper spool or into the spherical bearing with no slop. If there's any slop at all, the spherical will bang up and down going down the road and within just a matter of days or even weeks, the spherical bearing will be ruined. So when people say, hey, my camera plates are making noise, nine times out of 10, this top nut is not installed correctly. And if they drive around on it long enough, yes, it will ruin the spherical bearing. That's not our fault. That's an installation error. It happens all the time. That's why we're making this video. The, the correct way to tighten this is not to put an Allen key in there and turn this with a wrench. You can't torque this. You can't put a torque wrench on this because it's just gonna turn the shaft within the housing of the strut. You can't hold onto this chrome shaft correctly. There's no way to do it. When the spring's in there, if you try to grab on this to where it'll you know, resist rotation, you're gonna scratch the chrome and you're gonna ruin the strut. The only way to do this properly is with an impact gun, either electric or, or pneumatic. As you can see, there's a big gap there. We're gonna pulse this so that it goes on. You see my hand, I can't hold that. Because it's an impact gun, it'll turn the nut faster than the shaft. It's still not tight, it's still loose. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear a change in pitch of the gun when it bottoms out. Now, I could tell by driving this that it stopped going. It's no longer turning. And you can sit there and pulse it and pulse it and pulse it, it's not going anywhere. The, the number of threads coming through, you can see there, it's totally tight. It can't move. That's how you get it tight. You cannot do this with hand tools. You've got to use an impact. So John's going to demonstrate that once the top nut's tight, you can turn the, the spring perch freely, and that's because we have a real radial bearing in there and not some flat bearing or no bearing at all. The spherical bearing in the top can only pivot actually. It can't rotate. If it rotates, it wears out very quickly. So the spring rotation of when you steer the car, it has to be taken out by that bearing in the upper spring perch, which is why we include it, which is why our camera plates last so much longer than everyone else's. If you don't have an impact gun, that's okay. Get it as tight as you can by hand by doing the little hex key in the wrench. Put it on the car and then drive your car immediately to a shop and have a technician with an impact gun. Pulse it three or four times, then it's tight. So this is what we call our long reach top nut. We machine that here at Borschlag to grab down inside the spherical bearing when it's a really short upper stem on a strut. We'll include that on certain models. When you have this, you don't use that upper spool piece we showed earlier. You still need to impact this on, but because there's no nylon locking ring, you wanna use a drop of blue Loctite when you first assemble these, and then come back with an impact gun and tighten them in the car, buzz, buzz, buzz. About four or five pulses, if the threads exposed aren't changing, you bottomed out the top nut, it's fully tightened. That's what you want. Same technique is used to tighten the top nut on a shock shaft. This is an MCS TT1 shock for a NA and B Miata. And this is our top mount. To get this tight, 
Uh, MCS likes to do this double nut technique. It's fine, but the, the lowest nut we want to put on with an impact. And then we tighten the top nut to the bottom nut and it kind of locks them together. But to get that lower nut on, you really want to use an impact. Again, it'll just, it'll just rotate the shaft and inside the shock body and it'll never get tight. If you try to hold, there's nothing really to grab onto on this one. You, you'd have to grab onto the shaft, you're going to screw up the chrome. So if you use the impact, you don't have to touch the shafts. You don't have to scratch them up. You don't want to scratch up the chrome on a shock shaft or a strut shaft. So use an impact, put the nut on that way with a drop of blue Loctite or use a nylock nut and you'll be good to go. If you, if you get these loose and you drive around on them, you're going to ruin the spherical bearings and it's not the fault of the part, it's the fault of the installation. So now you know. Thanks for watching this short video. That's the only way to tighten a top nut on a, on a strut or a camera plate. If you don't do it correctly, it's going to make noise.